we're going to talk now about taking thread pull executor and process pull executor to the next step. In the previous video, I showed you that taking these two things with a list of work and using map was the easiest, simplest way to use the API and get a lot of work done. Now we're going to start introducing nuance. I'm importing the thread pull executor, process pull executor, and I'm pulling in a new one as completed. And we're going to see how that affects things. So what I've done here on my I.O. task and CPU task is I've simulated a situation where something takes a really long time at the front, but a lot of the other work starts getting done immediately. When you're making calls like to databases or uh, generating uh, CPU work, you don't they're not always equally sized jobs. And as completed allows you to move work forward as things finish versus waiting for the first thing to finish, then the second thing to finish. I created a worst case scenario where the first thing takes four seconds and everything else takes a quarter of a second, which causes an interesting situation. 90% of the time this won't matter, but when it does matter, as completed is the way to get through this. So we're going to go down here and I'm going to use Thread Pull Executor, Max Workers 20, and that allows some work to build up in the queue because I'm going to submit a range of 40 things to get done. And I do this with map pool like we did last time and I run through the results and I time the first time something gets done and the total time that it gets done. I do it a second way and this is what I want you to learn this go round is that this time I'm doing pool.submit instead of map and I create a list from this. So I'm using a uh, list comprehension here. I'm getting the same range and I'm using the pool submit IO task data call which returns a future result. I, I collect all the futures in a single list here. Then I go for future in as completed futures. It will find the first thing that completes and allow you to start work on that. And when I run that what you're going to see here is that in order time the first job processed at four seconds. Remember, I created that worst case scenario, but the total time was just a fraction over that. Now look at submit with as completed. The first job processed a quarter of a second in, even though the total time was the same for both. If you had a significant amount of work and you needed to keep things busy, this would be a way to do it if you knew that you had high variability in the jobs getting done. It's the same thing with process pool executor. Now remember this, when you call it, you can't call it directly. You have to put it in a function and then check if name equal main, then you call that. But it is identical code. I'm using process pool executor. I let it determine how many processes based on the number of CPUs I have. And then I do the same thing. I either map it or down here I do submit and collect that and then do as completed with those futures that are returned in the list. We're going to keep on this series and I'm going to slowly take you through how to add more nuance and more complexity. We're going to stay focused on the executor API and then later we'll be moving to some of the other APIs you can use to do Python concurrency. Hope you learned something. Subscribe so you can find out when these videos come out because I'm going to keep doing them. Smash that like button so I can help more people and I'll see you in the next one.